Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting East Coast Honda, and I'm checking out a 2022 Honda Civic sedan in the Touring trim level. This vehicle is sitting on 235-40 Goodyear tires wrapped around 18-inch alloy wheels with a gloss gray finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors in the front and solid rotors in the back. The name of this color is Crystal Black Pearl. And it's poor lighting conditions right now, but it is a pearl coat, but it's kind of hard to tell with the overcast. So here in the front, we have gloss black, which happens, the exterior color, which happens to kind of make some of the features disappear if I don't point them out. So this area right here is a matte black that extends here underneath the headlights so it goes over here all the way across it's looking pretty sharp uh, there's a parking sensor hidden in here as well there's another parking sensor here so this is another area in which this is a matte black which extends here into this grill area now the headlights and the fog lights all the exterior lights here in the front are LED. So low beams and high beams are in reflector LED headlight housings. The outer two reflectors is the low beams and there's an inner one that is your high beams. Taking a look at the profile here, basically all body colored. It extends there, the body color is here at the very base. There's no flat black or anything. Um, Handles are body colored. The upper portion of the side mirror is body colored. The lower portion is a flat black that matches these pillars here and here. Now the top of the glass has a chrome strip. Now if you were to tint the glass, you can kind of solidify all this area here uh, because the pillars are blacked out. Now if it was a gloss black on the pillars, it would help out with that a little bit better instead of this matte black. And the wheels look really nice here on the Touring. This is what the key looks like, and it is a different key design for this vehicle. So it's a little bit different contour. It's rounder instead of square, and it is feels maybe possibly a little bit lighter. I like this key. It's, it's contoured where you can slip it in your pocket easier, and the, it's not quite as, as hefty as the previous ones. Um, it does have a physical key on the inside, remote start, the ability to release the trunk, a panic button, and lock and unlock. Uh, let's go ahead and push the panic button, see what happens. Okay, so that just beeps the horn, flashes the lights. Let's release the trunk and see if how far it goes up. And it goes up all the way, that's nice. So as long as you have the key with you, it could be in your pocket, in a bag, as long as it's within a close proximity, within a few feet of the outside of either the driver or the passenger side door, you can lock the door by placing your hand or your finger over the sensor indicated, indicated by these little lines right here. So now it'll lock the door. To unlock it, you simply put your hand behind the handle as a sensor back here. The key has to be on the outside of the door within a few feet, and you can unlock the door just by putting your hand there, and it'll allow you access to the vehicle. Now, if you accidentally unlock the vehicle using the remote or your hand position here and you don't open the door, it will relock re after about 30 seconds or so. Uh, there's also a physical key here on the driver's side only under here. So you kind of have to put it underneath that part. You can see the little key symbol there. Blind spot and rear cross traffic alert indicators are here on the side mirror. So here's the inside of the passenger side door. Mostly black interior on this vehicle. Has some gloss black. So you can see it's a just a regular material black and then the gloss black. And then it has this other surface here that kind of looks like it's trying to be a textured, uh, like a carbon fiber similar look, that kind of thing. And it does have a little texturing to it when you feel it. Right, this is enclosed, so you can utilize that for a pocket. Soft touch surfaces are here. There is some stitching here in a uh, French design. 
So soft touch here, here, here. So this is like injection molding type stuff. This is vinyl. This is kind of like a vinyl type material. And then you have the hard plastics all the way down here in the bottom of the door. And then this is the pocket here, the larger pocket, bottle holder, that kind of thing. And this extends in to the right there. So it doesn't go very far. It just stops right there. Here's a threshold. No fancy seal plate or anything. Of course, they probably have one in the uh, one you can buy and put in there in the accessories catalog. So power seat here on the passenger side. It goes forward and back and tilt this part, but there's no up and down and there's no lumbar adjustment. Leather wrapped heated seats. And they have a little bit of a contrast stitching there. So there's smooth leather here on the outside and then there's perforations there in the middle and it has a little bit of a pattern striped pattern to the perforations looking pretty cool and the seats feel pretty comfortable so far my experience with it so far there's lots of room one of the salespeople was 6'1 he got in it and he put the seat all the way back and he, he could barely touch the pedal so he can so if you're over 6'1 you might be able to drive this vehicle no problem plenty of leg room so you can see here for the passenger side similar to the driver's side so you can see they covered up the climate control vents with this honeycomb here and there's a lot of gloss black here as well uh, soft touch surfaces here hard touch down here the glove compartment is not locking but it does have a soft landing and smooth on the inside just regular hard smooth hard plastics on the inside let's see what it looks like there You can see the opening for the front door is quite big so plenty of headroom no problem getting in and out of the front seat the passenger here in the back the rear passenger area look quite a bit smaller but the swing of the door is okay that's not too confined and there's a little bit of tapering going on in here and here um, but as far as getting in and out it's not that bad considering you know this type of vehicle it's uh it's actually pretty well designed so the inside of the back door very similar styling as the front so there's hard touch surfaces here pretty much unlike the front you have the hard touch surfaces and then this only soft surfaces is around your arm right here but it does have an enclosed pocket here and then at the bottom quite a bit smaller though you see there's a uh, there's 12 speakers in this vehicle so there's one there this one has the bose sound system so you can see there's one there, one there. I like the way they um, seal this up so you don't drop anything underneath the seat. Kind of makes it easier to find stuff when you drop it, especially if, if you have kids and stuff, they're throwing stuff on the ground, on the floor. And if that was open, there would be just a mess in there. So I like the way they just kind of contoured it so it doesn't accumulate anything. Now the back seat is basically a bench seat it has very little bolstering or anything um, so it's easy to kind of slide in and out there is cup holders two different size cup holders there and an armrest this lifts up so you can utilize that center portion now it has the isofix or latch system for car seats and it has this cover so you will need to kind of flip this velcro cover back in order to access those um, points there to the attachment points um, but you notice this cover is attached so you're not going to lose any covers or anything like some vehicles have this little plastic cover that you have to take off uh, this one you just kind of peel that back and then tuck it back when you're done so that's pretty handy there now these seats do fold down to add to your cargo space you do will have to release them uh, from the trunk and then you can fold them down on the back of the passenger seat but not the driver's seat there is a map pocket so you can see there's no one on the driver's seat is one here 
There's two USB charge ports back here and a pretty significant hump there in the middle. It is flat on top. And the seats are all the way back here. So to give you an idea of how much leg room you have uh, for the passenger space here in the back when you had the front seats all the way back, quite a bit. Get a look at the back of the vehicle. Here at the very top, there is a body colored shark fin antenna. The third brake light is at the base of the glass, right in here, LED. And it has a deck lid type spoiler going on, contoured into the actual trunk lid. Looking pretty sharp without being too tacky or anything. Has a touring badging there. And check this out. <laughs> The backup camera is like way over here. I don't know if you can see that. It's right in here. So it's not in the center. It's way over here. So I think they just uh, trying to drive me nuts with that. A completely new model and it's just had an opportunity to put it in the middle and integrate it well, but they put it there. There's parking sensors across the back. The exhaust is pretty well hidden, but you can see it when you get low enough. You can see there's two exhaust ports. These are reflectors right here. These are not lights. These are your tail lights and they are LED for the tail lights and the brake lights, but the turn signal and reverse lights are standard bulbs. So you saw how I open up the trunk with the key. You can there's a push this button under here instead of the key and release it and it will do the same thing. It'll lift up for you. It's basically just kind of spring loaded. There is insulation on the underside of the trunk and there is a little handle here for pulling it down. There's also an emergency, emergency release here that has a little glow in the dark car there. And I'm assuming you would push it that way to release it. Release, release the trunk. To lower the seats, here's the uh, the pulls right there. You just pull on that to release that one, pull on this one to release that one. So it's a 60-40 split, so you can fold down your seats, add to your cargo space while still maintaining passenger space. The opening is a little bit significantly more narrow and rounded than the actual seat area. So most of the interior of the trunk is carpeted and so you can protect your cargo. Quite a bit of space in here. Under this bottom floor is a spare tire and tools, which is nice to see. Some vehicles don't have a spare tire. Now there's an area here, you can see it has just kind of a really lame trunk light here. <laughs> Just one there in the middle. But, um, but you can see there's a lot of exposed metal and wires and speakers, stuff like that. So, you know, you wanna keep that in mind if you, you know, pile up your luggage in here, it could potentially uh, damage your luggage since there's no protection from it here. Or you could potentially, you know, pull a speaker wire out or something like that. So just want to keep that in mind. Something you may not notice when you actually, you know, look at the vehicle for the first time. It does not have a fully carpeted trunk. The fuel door is here on the driver's side and it's a locking fuel door. So right now the vehicle's locked. It locks this door as well when we unlock the vehicle. It also unlocks the fuel door and it's a capless design. So you don't have to worry about taking a cap off or anything. To start it up, as long as you have the key inside the vehicle, you put your foot on the brake. And when you do that, you see the start button illuminates. See, it kind of goes away, it kind of blends in. Now it's pulsing, but when you hold the brake, it illuminates and then you can push it to start it up.
Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Now you notice, unlike the passenger side, the driver's side does have a place to hook in uh, the floor mat. So there's one there and there's one over here. So that way it keeps it straight for you. Keeps it from sliding around. There's your accelerator and brake pedal. It does have a pretty significant um, footrest here and it's plastic covered. So let's take a look under the hood. So the hood latch is kind of over here. See it right there. To raise the hood, there's a latch a little bit to the left of center. So there's the center line here. So you just reach in a little bit to the left. And when you do that, you move, you find the la latch and then you move it to the right towards the center and you lift up. You see there's the latch right there. And the hood's not very heavy. It just feels like an aluminum hood. It does require a prop to hold it up. Here's the prop with a white tip there. You swing it up and there's actually two places to put it. This original position here for a lower position or there's a second position here uh, for, a, for the hood to go much higher. So there's the much higher position. I like that so I don't bump my head on the hood or anything and I can see a lot better. So there's insulation on the underside, a good portion of the underside of the hood. There's also a little catch right there for fresh air to enter. And that goes down right here. There's also seals across the front and the back, controlling airflow, heat, flow, also noise. There's an insulated battery here on the right side and it's easy to get to, so that's nice. And there's no big plastic cover covering up the engine. Here's the front of the engine. So this is a front wheel drive vehicle. The front is here. The back of the engine is here. You can see four coil packs where the cylinders are. So a four cylinder engine. And the transmission is down here, here in the back, uh, behind the engine, down in this area underneath the battery. So the exhaust, it's pretty interesting. The exhaust is here in the front. The intake is here in the back. Uh, you'll see the airflow flowing in. It has to go to the turbocharger because it's a turbocharged engine. And then once it compresses the air, it sends it over to the intake and puts it in the engine, allows it to go in the engine. Now, one of the things about having the exhaust in the front, that extra heat dumping in this area is going to Kind of compete with trying the, the 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 cooling system here so the cooling system is trying to cool have cool air coming in and release heat here and then you have it here as well but the good thing is uh, it's not near the firewall so you don't have heating up uh there on the firewall and and in interior of the vehicle so this reminds me of the Honda Accord, which 1.5 liter direct injection turbocharged four cylinder engine that puts out 180 horsepower and is paired to a CVT, continuously variable transmission. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. So there's the power windows here, the front two are automatic, one touch up and down. The rear windows, go down to here so they don't go all the way down so there's door lock controls and then the side mirrors are adjusted here you just pick a side and it has a little pad to adjust them you can release the trunk by pushing that button now the driver's side door is unlike the passenger side um, it is a power seat, but it has the ability to go up and down and tilt the seat. So there's a little bit more functionality besides just uh, forward and back. Really nice looking seats. To the left of the steering column here, uh, there is a few buttons. So this is a kind of a quick access to get to your safety features so you can enable or disable them. Traction control default is on, but you can turn it off here in case you need to spin tires. Your parking sensors, you can turn those on or off. It has a little indicator light letting you know that they are on. And there is the dimmer switch for your interior gauges. It also has a tilt 
and a telescoping steering column and you lock it in place here. You notice the lever is easy to see and it's easy to get to and use. Uh, some vehicles have them like in this weird spot or way under here or something like that. This is a really good spot to have it. Now I was going to put a shade over the windshield here. That's what I typically do. But it's such an overcast and it's not a lot of light coming in to mess anything up. It's actually maybe see, you might be able to see a little bit better if I have no shade. So I have the seat all the way down and all the way back here for the driver seat. And I'm six feet tall, just to give you an idea of the potential leg room here. And as you can see, I'm basically like feeling like a toddler because I could barely touch. I could put my legs completely straight out. Um, so this is a little bit too far back for me. And just, just great. I mean, this is, this doesn't get in the way and it's actually kind of dished out a little bit. Um, so it's not completely like a flat area. So it allows for more area for my leg. And over here, it's all just plenty of room. I mean, it's, it's surprising this is a Honda Civic. There's lots of room. Um, a vehicle this size, typically there's vehicles bigger than this and that they have more cramped areas for leg rooms. Weird. But anyways, it looks good to me as far as the leg room. So the steering wheel, it's a leather wrapped steering wheel and it kind of has like a rubbery feel to it so it's a little bit cushy it's not like hard as a rock and the thickness is good so it has a good thickness uh, too, uh, too thin of a steering wheel will kind of dig into your hands so this one kind of not only does have a little bit of a cushiness to it uh, it's also thick so you can get a good grip on it without feeling like it's too much pressure in one spot So the buttons here on the front, it does have paddle shifters back here, by the way. Plastic paddle shifters, and they kind of, just regular, cheapy kind of feeling, hard plastic. But they do follow the steering wheel. They're not attached to the column. All right, so here on the left side is your volume for your radio. Also change through your tracks or radio stations, depending on what you're doing. This button right here, it's actually a button for the voice recognition, but a scroll wheel and it's rubberized. So you can get a fairly decent grip without pushing too hard on it and accidentally pushing the buttons like some manufacturers like Genesis, um, where you utilize the scroll wheel a lot easier because it's rubber textured. Here on the right side, this is the cruise control. So you can turn it on, you can set, resume, cancel, so use that as a toggle. And then down here, um, you can set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you. Also the lane keep assist. Now with the 2022 models, it has a full range radar adaptive cruise control all the way down to a complete stop. Same thing with the lane keep assist. It keeps you within your lane the full time. It, it, you don't have to be going a certain speed. You can be just crawling through traffic and these both features will work. Pretty interesting. Um, so that scroll wheel here and right here, uh, those help you change some settings here on the, the, the gauges. We'll get to that in just a minute. The windshield wiper control is here on the right side. Has rain sensing windshield wipers. Here on the left side is the turn to signal, but also it has the headlight switch. Fog lights controlled here. Headlights are, um, you have the ability to turn off the daytime running light by toggling it off like that. And then automatic headlights and then parking lights. Okay, so here is an awesome, would say gauge cluster, but it's basically a screen. So you can see on the left side, you can see there's a like a, uh, a gauge, oh, well on the far left is the engine uh, coolant temperature there. On the far right is the fuel gauge. But then right here is the RPMs. So you can see those, it's like a bar that goes up and down. And then the speedometers there on the far right. Isn't that interesting the way it looks? But you can customize this screen. 
and uh, change the way it looks. It also has a digital speedometer here at the very top center, which is cool. Okay, so if I t use the left scroll wheel, you can see this is what it does. It kind of scrolls through this. I'm just going to quickly show you what it does. The right scroll wheel scrolls through this information. So you can decide what you want to see, uh, but also you know, what you want to select on. So it says customize display. Let's go into here. So we can go to hide and show. And then we can choose what we want. We got the range, we got speed and time, navigation, driver attention, seat belts. So some of these are grayed out to where you could you have to keep them basically because there's only so many uh, that you can that you could adjust. Let's go back out of here. And then gauge design. So let's go here. Gauge design, so you can have round, more traditional. All right, let's go back out of that. Let's go back out of that and see what it looks like. All right, so customize, gauge design. We saw the round, now we, we saw the bar, um, which is the original design we saw. And then round minimal. So gauges will hide when cruise is active. So that's pretty cool. Let's go back, back. So it basically still shows that, but it'll just go away when the cruise is active because you're keeping a set speed. So that's pretty interesting. Let's go back to gauge design um, and then bar minimal. Bar minimal will be um, same thing. It's just instead of that round, you'll have a bar and that it'll go away. All right, let's go back out of that, back out of that. Okay, so this is where you can go in and change to kilometers per hour. So scrolling down, we have a range and average fuel economy, which this is not accurate yet because the vehicle hasn't left the parking lot. But you notice it says trip A below there. It says 5.4 miles. Now, um, we can change A and B by pushing in on the scroll wheel. So that's trip A and trip B. You can reset those independently. When we scroll down, you can actually get more information about the trip A and trip B here. And by pushing the button, you can switch back and forth. Average speed, one mile per hour. Elapsed time, an hour and 55 minutes. So it hasn't really been doing much. Uh, sitting in the showroom, basically. So there's the uh, uh, digital compass. Um, a driver attention level. Shows you what seat does not have their seat belt or does have their seat belt fastened. So it shows you that there's an occupant in the seat and it, they don't have their seat belt pa uh, fastened. Uh, oil life, and then your safety support. So we can go in here and choose what we want to have on or off. Road departure mitigation, blind spot information, low speed braking control, collision mitigation braking system, and then you go back out. So all you have to do is uncheck the ones that you don't want to have. And then of course we we'll go back to customize display. So on the left side, uh, so we can we scroll through so you can see all the different options here AM FM it shows you basically you can choose different um, audio sources and stuff uh, USB Bluetooth apps Apple CarPlay Android Auto is wireless There's also wireless charging for your cell phone in this vehicle as well um, so we can go to customize display and we can hide and show different things here Let's get back here. Now, audio and clock, we can have on. So that way we can see that. All right. So you can see the scroll wheels do quite a bit. And they're so minimalist. It's just a little scroll wheel there. And you push, you just scroll it and then push in. It's very simple. <laughs> it's, but there's a lot of functionality here in that, um, that scroll wheel setup. And I like the way it's rubberized, so it's easy to use without accidentally pressing it. So there's a vehicle in front of me and also beside me in front of me a little bit. 
and it picks up on both of those, both in and out of my lane. And it's actually applying brakes for me a little bit to slow me down, to keep me at a set distance. Now I can change the distance, so it gets a little bit closer. Now the vehicle in front of me is slapping on the brakes, so I'm going to just go ahead and put my foot on the brakes. The cruise control is very responsive. It doesn't have any kind of lag in it like my Ridgeline does. I like the way you can actually see where it's applying brakes. So sometimes the vehicle will apply brakes. It'll let you know visually here what's going on with the angle of the lines, but also the vehicle in front of you, and also your own brake lights, which is cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and change lanes. So now it's focused on another vehicle in another lane, but you can still see that other one that was next to me as I pass it. Now it's showing traffic is slower, so it sees the cars ahead of me. It even shows the car ahead of me the way it sways within the lines as well. So it's not always in the very center of the road, and it can tell that. Now, I really like the full digital display, and there's so much potential here. Uh, you can customize the way it looks and all that stuff. Um, and some manufacturers don't fully take advantage of a, as the display. And I think in this case, you know, they could have added some more stuff, maybe a um, navigation map, maybe the digital speedometer a little bit bigger. And, you know, it's kind of, it's okay, but uh, it could be a little bit bigger that kind of thing, or have the option to make it bigger, you know, maybe fill in some of the areas a little bit more with more important information and, and less important information you can take away, that kind of thing. Um, but overall, I think it's great. I mean, for a Honda Civic, it's awesome. Okay, so here's the touch screen here in the middle. And it's actually, the camera makes it look like there's this huge glare, but I can see it fine. So I really like the, the use of colors and the size of it, the distance, you know, from the, the occupants here is good. It has a nice big digital clock right there, which is great. Um, it's just look really impressive. Just on first glance, it looks good. You know, the use of the colors, the clarity, all that stuff. Now these are physical, like you push these buttons. These are not soft touch buttons here. And there is a volume knob. And it's not rubberized though. So it's kind of, but it is round so you can grip it there. Um, but so there's a volume turn to the stations and then there's these physical buttons right here. So this is the home screen, which has the different uh, options here. Similar to your phone, it has these little tiles that you can uh, access. And you can swipe to the right and get more information here. Uh, there's also quick access uh, points down here. Now this is part of the touch screen. So if we go to all apps, so you can see it's a little scroll here that you can choose what you want. And go back home, navigation, let's look at the navigation map. You can zoom in and out, let's see what it looks like here. looks pretty good. I mean the clarity, the saturation of the colors, the resolution, so far looking pretty good. All right, let's go back home. Phone, you'll have to pair your phone, but once you do, you have access to that. Um, there's the radio source here, traditional radio. There's a satellite radio. You can see what that looks like. And has some ar album art and presets there at the bottom. And you notice these buttons here maintain their positions. So that way you can quickly access those. Navigation phone, the radio, Bluetooth, um, and then you have uh, smart shortcuts. And um, so you, you know, connect your phone and you can set it up if you want.
now learning over time. So based on your listening, navigation, and calling history and preferences, the vehicle will learn and continue to improve over time. So I'm assuming, you know, like the, the, the features that you use most will be more prominent, that kind of thing. All right, so the display mode, you can change the, the brightness and you can actually turn this to display off if you want to. You just push the home button or whatever to turn it back on. Trip computer. You have your trip A and your trip B and in your current drive. Uh, smartphone connection, of course, that's for your, uh, your wireless Apple CarPlay Android Auto. You have general settings and you have vehicle settings. And the vehicle settings are here. You want to have set up all this stuff. You know, when you first get the vehicle, your lighting and stuff like that. I like the way you could just pull up a clock and then you focus on that. And it has settings for this, so you can change the faces here. So if we want to have, um, there we go. You can have that guy with a digital clock if you want, that kind of thing. Honda Link, uh, this is a thing that goes on your cell phone. I've tried it on my car. Depending on the vehicle, there's different features that you can have, but um, some of them are kind of limited. So, uh, you know, you can kind of try it out and see if you like it, that kind of thing. But that's kind of a quick rundown. Um, so the home screen has these tiles that you can go into. You also have quick access buttons down here, which will, over time, will change depending on what you use most. And, um, you know, you can go back out of pages. It has a physical volume knob, tune to the stations, digital clock that's always in the same spot, which is nice. So, yeah, very functional screen. While we're looking at the screen, let's go ahead and put it in reverse. And this is the, what it looks like. Now, it's a high-resolution uh, screen, but the camera isn't all that great. And you can notice that the, 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 the saturation is poor. There's a lot of, now the distortion is because of this wide angle view. There's different views here. There's a more linear view. This is a top down view, more linear view. But even then, it's not a very good camera system. Rear cross traffic alert, which you could turn on or off. You can adjust the, the brightness and stuff here. But, you know, it's, it's okay. Um, it could have been a lot better, I think, for a 2021, 2022 vehicle. Um, and, it, and it's not a limitation of the screen because the screen has a high clarity, high contrast. Um, let's go ahead and put it in. So you can see it is a high resolution screen. It is a capable of nice colors and everything. Um, but the camera is just rather on the poor side. Um, while we have the camera up, I'm going to turn the steering wheel so you can see it does have active guidelines. And also the camera being offset the way it is. So it's like, it's like offset that way of the vehicle. So you can see like the tag, more like the tag over here and not the tag on this side, that kind of thing. So when it's stretched out like it is, um, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of, the, the guidelines help, but it, it's kind of like, this, since the distortion is so severe, it is helpful to see what's behind you, but it would be nicer if it was in the middle. So that way you, you can kind of, it may, would make more sense if it was in the middle, to my mind anyway. Let me know what you think in the comments, your opinion about that. Okay, so here's the climate control. Very simple. Driver, passenger, fan speed, where you want the air to blow, front and rear defrosters. The rear defrosters also turn on the heated side mirrors. The temperature is easily displayed, easily seen. Uh, nice white, bright letters on a black background. The, the dials are also backlit illuminated. You have the heated seat controls here. It's a high, medium, and low, and off. So it's a three-stage heated seat. So it's very simple, easy to understand, easy to use, and easy to see. So fantastic as far as the direction they're going in. So you can see there's a kind of like a metallic type knobs here. Looking really nice. And 
and these um, vents, articulating vents, it kind of like has this little stick that joystick that pops out and you can change the direction R real easy, real easy to use. And it kind of blends them in into the design of the vehicle, the, the, all the vents. Okay, so down here, um, USB ports, there's a charge one and also to access the system. 12 volt power supply as well. Wireless charge port. You can see there's a little light in there. We'll have a night video for this vehicle as well. And this is rubberized, so when you put your phone in there, it has these little bumps on the sides. Um, to keep, if you set your phone there, it keeps it from sliding left to right and, and then exiting the pad and then stop charging. So it's pretty cool. Now, I'm assuming that size, these little bumps are bigger than most phones on the market. So we'll see. I mean, you know how they have like huge phones, but it seems like most phones will fit in that area. Because if not, it won't lay flat. Okay, so the cup holders are here. It does have little articulating arms to take up the slack so bottles and stuff don't wobble around, which is great. I wish my Honda Ridgeline had those. There's a shifter, more traditional type shifter. There's reverse, neutral, and drive. It's pretty simple. Now you can change your drive mode here. So as you push it down, it pops up here. So Econ. So it has Econ, Normal, and then Sport. Sport uh, changes the, you can see the little red background now, letting you know that it is in Sport mode. And then there's Normal, and then Economy has a little green area there. So that's a good util utilization of this screen here in the middle. Uh, it does have a auto start start feature where it stops the vehicle when you, I mean, it stop, turns the engine off when you stop the vehicle. You can turn that feature off, which I always do. Electronic parking brake, and it engages the rear wheels. And then a brake hold feature, and which it'll hold the brake for you when you come to a complete stop. So if you're, you know, sitting in traffic or whatever, you don't have to hold the brake the whole time. You can be in drive, and it'll hold the brake if you have that on. And in this surface right here is a texturized surface similar to what you saw in the doors. And it's kind of, if you can see that, it's kinda, you can actually feel a little texture. And it's pretty neat looking. It is, kind of reminds me a little bit of like a carbon fiber look. But it looks pretty neat. The fact that you can touch it and you feel a little texture to it makes it a little bit better. Um, some vehicles you have this, you have like a pattern to it, but then it's just a smooth surface. Um, so this is actually, you know, just kind of neat and also it helps out with reflections too. Now this gloss piece right here would have a lot of reflections, I'm assuming. But so far everything's been no problem as far as seeing it or, or you know, interacting with it. It's been really good. Okay, so here's the armrest, and it's soft, very soft. It bottoms out after, I don't know, half inch or so, but it's pretty soft and, and you know, it doesn't feel like some of them. Some of them feel like a an anvil with a rag laying over it, but this one feels pretty good. It does have some stitching here on the side as well. Okay, so this lifts up, and it's kind of spring-loaded, so it just wants to go up when you, once you release it, and it goes up to that position there. And there's this little quick access tray that seems pretty easy to use. You can put it in the front or the back. There's a little spot for either way. And then it has this compartment that kind of hard for the camera to pick up, but so I increase the bright brightness on this on the camera so you can hopefully see in there. This is the compartment and it has a rubberized little floor thing in the bottom. I'm going to try to take it out. Because it's kind of weird. It has like this... There's the bottom. There's the top. It has like this uh, piece that kind of extends down in this area where these bolts are. 
but it's pretty much a basic compartment. It doesn't have anything really special about it. It doesn't have any kind of charge ports or USB ports or anything like that. And it doesn't really have an air place for wires that I can tell. No obvious place for wires to go in and out. Now there's a little bit of space that you might be able to squeeze one in there, but there's no charge ports or anything, so you wouldn't really need to do that. There's an auto dim rear view mirror and you can turn that feature on or off here. Uh, garage door opener controls, home link controls are here and on the bottom. There is little ambient lights right in here. Reading lights here and here. You can turn on all the interior lights by rocking this little switch to the right. To the left you can turn it all off or you can have it in a center position and have the interior lights turn on with the door. This is for the sunroof, we'll get to that in just a minute. Place to put your shades, and it has like this kind of like foam interior. Kind of protect them here on this side, but not on this side. So the visors have a cloth matching the headliner, and this is a light colored headliner. I don't know if you notice that in com contrast with the black on the bottom. So it kind of adds a little bit of, you know, ambient light in here, just light bouncing around so it's not absorbing so much which is good. I wish the interior pockets would have that lighter color, but anyways. Um, so it has an actual light and a mirror, just kind of a standard light. And they do extend out, but other than that, they're pretty basic. There's no clip or anything. There's no clip for putting your registration or anything like that. It's just real basic. There is a speaker, one on each side of these pillars, these Bose speakers right in there. And the visibility, um, as far as the visibility, since I don't have a shade here in the front, it's really good to point out. You can see there's space right here, you can see very narrow pillars here in the front. Really nice visibility here in the front. And pretty much the same thing there in the back. Real nice visibility. Um, now, of course, it depends on your passenger's hairdos and stuff <laughs> that might get in the way. But uh, other than that, I mean, pretty darn decent. You can see the little window back there so you can see through that pillar. The headrests don't stick up too much. And of course, it has the parking sensors front and rear, rear cross traffic alert, blind spot monitor system, backup camera, all kinds of features to help you um, safely drive the vehicle. So yeah, thank you for watching. There's gonna be a night video. There's going to be a test drive video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.